Ya, tapi aku sangat Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, let me welcome, let me welcome you for this uh, Ajadi Kamrit Matsu lecture series. Uh, uh, my colleague uh, Prachi Pradhan, she will be presenting from aluminium metal. And then I will be giving presentation on the bare people. So if I think uh, most of the people have joined, so can we start the presentation? Yeah, this is uh, Dr. Lare. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Sir, uh, hello. Sir. Uh, so let me welcome the all uh, today's speaker. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of the Dachna Institute of Technology yeah. and uh, Institution Innovation Council, which is uh, the council uh, form for the promoting innovation, entrepreneurship, and uh, startup activities in the institute itself. Yeah. So this uh, institute, this council serves for this purpose. Mm. And in this uh, council, we uh, carry out the various act activities uh, throughout the year. Yeah. Uh, Along with hackathons, uh, we arrange uh, 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 lectures from experts from various fields. So yeah. We work strictly into uh, uh, specific specific field for uh, 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 special specialty product to number of uh, other products. Yeah. And uh, uh, special uh, uh, special uh, attention is given to. Uh, the processes and products which uh, which are uh, which can be scaled up and commercialized from the uh, idea to commercialization so that kind of work we are carrying out uh, in this uh, council mm -hmm. uh, since our director as well as president of uh, this innovation council is not uh, uh, present today he is busy uh, with some other work yeah so uh, I am convener of this uh, IIC uh, LIT. So let me introduce today's speaker hmm. to all the uh, students and teachers, faculty, uh, faculties, and my colleagues who are present uh, on this forum. So today's uh, speaker is esteemed uh, Mr. M J Yadda sir, who is senior principal scientist yeah. at, uh, at uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Aluminium Research uh, Development and Design Center uh, in Oxide and Alumna Division. And uh, to his professional, uh, let me introduce to his uh, professional details. His uh, research area includes bauxite, bauxite waste utilization, alumina technology, and energy conservation. He has uh, undertaken a number of products, uh, projects which are technically, uh, technologically uh, evaluation of bauxite, wherein he specifically. Uh, 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 evaluated the technological evaluation uh, for uh, Kuturmali Kutur bauxite, uh, Rajnanda bauxite, Menpat bauxite, and Samirpat bauxite, and uh, Kodinga Malai, uh, Mali bauxite. So, uh, yes, uh, also uh, area wherein he has uh, developed his uh, uh, technical uh, expertise in characterization and technological testing of bauxite. At the same time, uh, his area includes double digestion studies for processing of bohemite bauxite, uh, then benefaction of uh, bauxite, bauxite to, to the process improvement and process development for pilot scale studies uh, for the manufacturing of constructional rocks and bricks for uh, an artificial ceramic stone, cheap utilizing red mud. Then he is also into energy audits. Then he is uh, he worked as a member for number of technological committees. So in aluminium sector, he is expert as, uh, as well as he is appointed by uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency, then uh, Ministry of Power, 
for uh, perform and achieve the trade trade under uh, national uh, mission for enhanced energy efficiency. He has been awarded with number of uh, awards. So awarded three months uh, unit unit of collective training uh, okay. at Hungary for uh, for training in mass and heat uh, balance software. Then visited CSIRO for Australia for workshop on management of oxide residue in processing of high silica oxide at Perth uh, during March uh, 2011. And he has uh, patents to his credit also the process for preparation of lightweight cone bricks. Uh, so, looking at his profile, we will, as a teacher in uh, faculties, at the same time our student will be benefited by uh, the expertise of today's speaker. So, on behalf of LRT family and uh, ISC especially, I welcome you sir and uh, uh, your fellow colleagues who are present uh, with you for delivering today's talk. Over to you sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Lade. Uh, my colleague uh, Prachi Pradhan, she is working as a scientist in my department. She will be presenting the first part that is uh, something about our center and uh, the uh, aluminium and its role in the, our Indian economy. And after which I will be presenting on the bear process. So over to you, Prachi. Thank you, sir. Uh Good afternoon everybody, I am Prachi Prabha Pradhan, so I am working as a junior scientist in Jena DDC. So let me uh, start about uh, aluminium that is from uh, mine to metal. So our center was established in 1989 uh, with, uh, along with UNDP that is uh, uh, our uh, union of uh, sorry, United Nation uh, National Program Development, 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 Development Program in 1989 and it was fully uh, functional in 1996 onwards. So these are our vision and mission. So vision is uh, to be renowned nationally and globally as uh, primary research hub for all aluminium products and uh, processing and uh, mission is uh, to undertake different innovative research projects for uh, providing complete technological solution to meet the challenges for sustainability of aluminum industry. So our objectives mainly includes uh, to carry out different research for raw materials and energy consumption and uh, to uh, set up data banks in the areas of bauxite and uh, impart training to Indian aluminum industry personnel and uh, assist industry in uh, carrying out different experiments and technology and to develop indigenous know-how of uh, alumina and uh, aluminium. So now coming uh, to the domain of expertise and uh, research and development. So we have four different uh, bauxite alumina, uh, analytical, downstream and electrolysis. So bauxite alumina, it is uh, mainly consisting of beneficial part and uh, technological evaluation alumina technology and uh, it is also related to special alumina. Similarly, uh, for uh, electrolysis part that is for smelter, we are having uh, smelter instrumentation uh, and uh, cell monitoring systems. And uh, analytical division uh, is mainly based on physical chemical analysis of ores and minerals and uh, it is also based on STLP or STLC for heavy metals that is toxicity characteristics procedure and uh, STLC which is soluble threshold limit concentration which is used for uh, heavy metal. Uh, apart from that aluminium which is uh, for downstream part so that is uh, mainly related to casting, metal forming, elevated product development and uh, characterization part. So apart from these all four departments we have other group also which is related to waste utilization, mathematical modeling, energy conservation and uh, environment management. So these are some of our uh, R&D contributions uh, till 2020-20. So we have completed around 101 uh, industrial projects and now three are ongoing. Clearly from uh, Ministry of Mines, uh, uh, we, are, we have already completed 27 projects and uh, out of that seven are ongoing now. And uh, our scientists have already filed 22 patents. Out of this, four have already granted. And uh, similarly, 650 international and national papers have been published in different journals. 
apart from that uh, we also carry different seminar and workshop we have already done 65 uh, seminars and workshop till now uh, now coming to the history of aluminium uh, it is one of the newest metals to be discovered that is in 19th century uh, these are uh, some of the landmark years in the aluminium history which contributed to its status which uh, the metal is uh, enjoying now so till 1886 aluminium was produced in very small batches and it was very expensive due to carbothermic reduction so from uh, allium diagram we can see uh, that uh, it requires a lot of energy uh, to reduce alumina uh, alumina to aluminium so hence uh, huge cost of production uh, is required but uh, with invention of uh, electrolysis process by hall and harrow independently around the same time and just then electricity was becoming widely available uh, available uh, with additions effect and inventions so this was stepping stone for mass production of aluminium and uh, we can also see the bare process which is very uh, cheap and feasible uh, process so made bauxite refining cheaper and uh, that is used uh, that is further used for the production of aluminium in the electrolysis process now coming uh, to the next slide so this is the original electrolytic cell uh, setup this is the modern electrolysis spot set of uh, at nalco which is located in angul this is a smelter plant in nalco uh, now coming uh, to the uh, history of uh, aluminium so some more landmark years in the history of aluminium in 1909 alfred uh, william german scientist invented duralumin so which is a alloy of copper and aluminium in which uh, basically we will be studying thermos precipitation hardening or uh, age hardening mechanism so apart from this in 1957 ussr that is union of soviet specialist republics launched fast artificial satellite which is made of aluminium and in 1958 uh, production of aluminium cans uh, was uh, done by kaiser aluminium corporation and uh, this aluminium cans are having highest recycling rates all over the world that is nearly about 90 percent so this is all about uh, history of aluminium now coming to the modern uh, industry so here uh, we can see these are three uh, steps uh, in primary aluminium production that is starting from mining and uh, refining uh, which is used in the bears process and uh, smelting that is used in the hall terror process uh, now coming to the introduction so this is uh, we are saying uh, this is the luckiest number that is 13 uh, the atomic number of uh, aluminium uh, so here uh, we can see uh, for the world uh, normally 13 number is unlucky but for us uh, the aluminium producer and for all R&D institute we are considering this number as a lucky number uh, because uh, it is the bread and butter for us so this is the most abundant metal and second most used uh, metal after steel so this is the fastest growing metal in the world since 1966 uh, 60 followed by copper and uh, iron so this is uh, mainly the production of aluminium uh, how it is produced so as uh, we can see here the initial step in the aluminium production is refining of bauxite that is removal of gang minerals from bauxite and we are processing through Bayer's process and it is uh, followed by electrolysis of uh, alumina uh, to produce uh, ingots which are further processed to uh, produce various uh, finished goods. So uh, normally these products will be scrapped and used for recycling and uh, here we can say nearly 4 kg of bauxite which is producing around 2 kg of alumina and uh, finally 1 kg of alumina. So current research and development is mainly focused on uh, reducing uh, of carbon uh, footprint of aluminium uh, which consumes high energy by moving towards uh, renewable uh, energy. So in recent studies in uh, UK there are some thermal flower plants so being shut down in order to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions and uh, moving towards greener sources. 
so also research is uh, being focused on uh, utilization of red mud spent for lining and truss which is generated in the melting of uh, aluminum so this is uh, all about uh, the primary aluminum production so these are the properties of aluminum so it is uh, because of these properties aluminum is used in several applications uh, because of its light weight it is used in aerospace and transport and day by day this use is increasing and uh, it is recycle recycle recyclable also as said earlier it requires fraction of energy uh, for the production of primary metals also it has good uh, conductivity so because of that so it can be used uh, in transmission conductor cables and uh, uh, it has an excellent uh, barrier against light uh, color contamination so due to its uh, uh, non contamination properties it can be used in packaging food and uh, pharmaceutical etc so these are some of the beautiful properties of alumin aluminum uh, for which it can be used in uh, several applications so now coming to this uh, global aluminum produ production so here uh, we can uh, see from this global aluminum production so china produces uh, more than 50% of the total primary aluminum uh, followed by india we can see uh, here which is around 3.7 million tons so here china is producing around 37337 uh, uh, metric tons of aluminum and uh, followed by gcc and uh, if we see then it is coming around west europe it is 3334 metric tons and india is only 3.7 million tons now coming to the global uh, alumina production so again uh, china is the leading producer of alumina and uh, india is standing in, in its uh, fifth position for the global alumina production now we can see the journey of indian uh, aluminum industry so aluminum production in india started in uh, 1943 with indian aluminum company even though uh, prior to that since 1939 aluminum is being imported and uh, manufactured into products in the country so this is the journey of indian aluminum industry so we have uh, uh, indian aluminum industry like hindelco four uh, refineries of hindelco and one of nalco and one is from vedanta we have six refineries and seven smelters which is located in india so these are the different indian aluminum industry hindel co set up in 1962 with a capacity of 20000 uh, uh, tons per annum whereas malco it was established in 1965 at 10000 ton per uh, annum and uh, balco it was 1 lakh capacity whereas uh, vedanta was having highest with 23 lakhs ton per annum that is the install capacity and jena ddc uh, became fully functional in 1996 this is all about uh, the journey of indian aluminum industry so this is uh, this i have already explained in the previous slide so we have all six uh, refineries and seven aluminum smelters in india now coming uh, to the india's position so india is the fifth largest bauxite uh, uh, deposit india has the fifth largest bauxite deposits and if we see for alumina it is uh, coming for fourth position and it is also the second uh, largest uh, coal producer this is the indian uh, statistics uh, of uh, this so here we can see vedanta is the leading producer of aluminum in the country uh, whereas hindelco is the leading uh, producer of alumina in the country so you can see primary and secondary aluminum production so secondary aluminum is normally the recycled aluminum which is produced from uh, scrap so in uh, 19 2019 so uh, alumina installed capacity in india was 7.5 56 million tons and uh, production was uh, 6.45 million tons similarly for primary aluminum the install capacity was 4.1 million ton and uh, the production was 3.6 million tons so these are all uh, the indian statistics of different uh, aluminum producers so indian bauxite scenario here uh, this are the various bauxite deposits of india it is located in different parts that is in east coast western uh, central india jammu kashmir and gujarat now 
this is also the bauxite reserves in india so india has huge bauxite reserves mostly located in forest areas so in order to prevent uh, excessive deforestation government is uh, promoting uh, recycling to meet the growing aluminium demand uh, in the country so here you can see odisha is the leading uh, state uh, for the production of uh, bauxite uh, for the re bauxite reserves of, uh, in 51% followed by andhra pradesh and chatisgarh uh, maharashtra and uh, jharkhand now coming uh, to the application part so uh, here you can see value addition uh, takes place uh, when a billet or ingot is processed to, to a product like extrusion seed tube etc so india is a net importer of value added products and uh, net exporter of semi finished goods so we produce aluminium ingots and uh, export them and in turn import lot of finished goods so and uh, so there is a huge uh, technology uh, gap uh, exist in the country for uh, production of these value added products now coming to the downstream capacity in india so indian primary manufacturers install capacity was uh, around uh, 4.1 million tons annually and currently uh, 90 90% of its capacity is being utilized in different sectors like uh, different uh, sectors like in extrusion uh, uh, flat roll products and foils wire rods and casting etc so downstream capacity is uh, around uh, 3.8 uh, 3.8 million ton so we have lot of uh, opportunities uh, for uh, aluminium so there is a huge potential growth for aluminium especially in transport and construction uh, if uh, if we see the per capita consumption of aluminium in india it has very low per capita that is 2.5 uh, kg per person so countries like uh, germany and uh, south korea uh, is having a higher values which utilize majority of the aluminium in auto mobile and construction uh, sector so india's consumption in this sector is fairly low and uh, which is uh, very low com compared to the global scenario so if uh, india will be starting uh, its application in the construction and automobile sector so our this world average per capita uh, consumption uh, of aluminium will be increased which is now uh, 11 kg per person and uh, now indian cars also have very low aluminium content compared to the global average that is why this old world average is uh, very less that is 11 kg per person so these are some importance of aluminium here we can see uh, so through these programs uh, uh, like government has committed to reach 100 gigawatt solar capacity by 2020 2022 from 20 gigawatts today so this will also help uh, di indirect or direct employment and uh, electrification of railway lines faster adoption and manufacturing of uh, electric vehicles in india this is the another one uh, through which uh, direct uh, or indirect employment can be done and make in india and national capital goods policy development of 100 smart city is uh, the another one uh, which uh, can also impact in this uh, opportunities now coming to the challenges of aluminium in aluminium industry so challenges are power consumption uh, carbon footprint uh, indigenous technology development and uh, bulk utilization of uh, wastes like red mud spent for line pot lining and dress so in order to reduce power consumption and reducing carbon footprint moving towards greener energy sources in a in a uh, technology uh, plays an important role so very few technology are so far proved that their uh, potential for uh, bulk utilization government is uh, framing policies uh, to mandate use of these waste in several applications and uh, gnrdc is playing an important role uh, in those uh, aluminum industry globally aims to be net zero carbon in emission industry by uh, 2050 uh one way is uh, through uses in applications and uh, recycling which reduces the carbon footprint now coming to this uh, circular uh, e economy and uh, uh, and reuse resource efficiency and resource efficiency in uh, aluminum 
so circular economy is cradle to cradle concept where anything which is produced at the end of its life is either reused or recycled and it doesn't end up with the dump yards we can see here uh, the same thing we don't have any dump yards or waste in the circular economy but if we see in the linear economy and reuse economy this can be uh, recycled so non recyclable waste and here waste will be generated but in case of circular economy there is no dump yard or waste so resource efficiency efficiency is efficient use of earth's resources like bauxite in a sustainable manner now coming uh, to this uh, recycling industry in india so these are some challenges of aluminum recycling industry in india so uh, indian recycling industry is uh, scrap dependent and uh, technology wise not so advanced so there is a need for development of infrastructure for scrap collection uh, in the country and also uh, for efficient uh, recycling practices so this application of secondary aluminium we can see here mostly 60 to 70% percent uh, used in alloy crafting for automobile and engineering sectors 4 to 7% percent deep oxidation products for steel industries and uh, the remaining part it is used for seeds cycles utensils and uh, extrusion purposes so major uh, research and development needs for aluminum industry uh, are in uh, bo bulk utilization of bauxite residue continuous and semi continuous sensors and uh, development of inert uh, anode which is already been discussed and uh, uh, low temperature electrolytic bath uh, which can reduce the energy required by 25% that is to 11 kilowatt hour uh, per kg which was earlier 13 to 14 kilowatt hour per kg and alternate uh, commercial processes for aluminum productions and manufacturing processes for scrap tolerant alloys now the role of technology and research so sensor play crucial role in digitalization of the process and enable implementation of industry for technologies like digital production process and control automation and robotics technology etc so big data machine learning and artificial intelligence can be used and technologies like additive manufacturing and inert anodes sustainable production and implementation of industry 4 will change the face of indian aluminum industry and uh, it will help in uh, moving towards the net zero carbon uh, net zero carbon so current alloys uh, have low tolerance of fe and uh, developing alloys with high tolerance of iron can boost uh, recycling also so now coming to the conclusion part indian uh, indian industry is very competitive and implementation of four uh, which is uh, already in progress in the primary industry which is leading to improve efficiency productivity and safety uh, moving towards alternative energy uh, and recycling produces uh, aluminium with lower carbon footprint so government uh, initiative is also boost uh, uses of aluminium in the country thank you thank you prachi <coughs> thank you sir then i will start with uh, my presentation <coughs> on the bear process i welcome you all for uh, the topic on principles of bare process unit operation and unit process as the name of the topic uh, indicates the bare process is basically a cyclable process where the streams are basically recycled back and it's a perfect example of many unit operation and unit processes which are there in the, which are of interest for chemical engineering so 
I start with my presentation that previously the process for alumina production when it, when it started initially there was a lime sitter process at that time that process was basically used for those bauxites which are having very high amount of silica then there was a devil pechine process which basically came from france then there was a serpec process and finally the pair process was developed so i will just give you a brief idea about the lime sitter process this was basically carried out at very uh, by heating the bauxite with limestone at 1300 to 1400 degrees temperature giving calcium silicate and uh, giving the alumina which was then leached out with sodium hydroxide to give a sodium aluminate and after the residue material is uh, settled along you get the sodium aluminate and that sodium aluminate is then precipitated to get alumina trihydride but this process was not successful because of the high temperature required for uh, the processing of this type of bauxite then there was a devile pechine process this was on basis of using sodium carbonate or soda ash and again in this bauxite was heated to a temperature of 1000 degrees with evolution of carbon dioxide and formation of solid sodium aluminate this was leached with water to get the sodium aluminate solution and then carbon dioxide was bubbled to get to precipitate out the alumina trihydrate and this alumina trihydrate was then basically processed uh, calcined and then sent to the smelters for the electrolysis then there was a serpec process this process of also was use of carbon and nitrogen at a temperature of 1600 degrees temperature to form aluminum nitride which on hydrolysis gives you alumina trihydrate and with revolve with evolution of ammonia but since the temperature requirement was very high hence this process couldn't be commercially operated because it was not economically viable then in 1888 carl joseph bayer of austria he patented the first present alumina production process for bauxite in germany and till now no other researcher is able to produce an alternative process for alumina production and hence the bayer process is used worldwide for using the uh, bauxite the bauxite should have following characteristics the alumina should be in the range of 43 to 54% iron 10 to 28% silica 2 to 10% but normally we uh, the aluminum industries prefer that the alumina should be less than 4% or 5% because higher silica con concentration will result in uh, more caustic soda losses and titanium dioxide and loss on ignition loss of ignition is the crystalline water which basically gets out when you heat the bauxite to a temperature of 1100 degrees temperature so these are the general characteristics of the metallurgical grade indian bauxite and luckily for us india being the fifth largest producer of bauxite and uh, apart from it the quality of the bauxite available in the east coast part is excellent for alumina production that is for metallurgical grade when we are considering the bauxites it is containing some major elements like aluminum silicon and iron there are very minor elements like nickel cobalt chromium titanium vanadium gallium and out of which you will be surprised to find that most of the vanadium required by the steel industry is catered by the aluminum as a by product from the uh, alumina manufacturer even the gallium which is required in the electronic industry is is uh, available from the bare process liquor so it is having some sparingly soluble impurities and which doesn't cause any problems then some medium soluble impurities like silica 
phosphorus vanadium gallium which gives rise to some process problems as well as contamination then since bauxite is basically coming from soil so it is containing some highly soluble inorganic and organic impurities which uh, accumulate and reduce the process efficiency this is the flow sheet of the wear process in which the bauxite which is basically mined from the bauxite is basically grounded out first it is crushed so crushing and grinding operation is one of the important uh, step here and after that it goes to the ball mill or nowadays rod mills are used so in the ball mill and the ground mill uh, uh, rod mill normally bauxite is ground in a wet condition that is with sodium hydroxide liquor so there is a wet grinding after wet grinding it goes for a step called as desilication and dilution since this process is endothermic lot of amount of steam is added to provide the necessary energy after the desilication and dilution is over it is then went for dilution and settling where starch and synthetic flocculants are used for facilitating the separation of the red mud <coughs> and since the red mud is containing some caustic soda attached with it so that's why it has to be washed before disposal the aluminate liquor which we get is basically filtered in a controlled filtration this is another of unit operation that is a controlled filtration in which we basically remove the fine floating impurities so that these impurities does not contaminate the product tried after filtration it is cooled and then sent to the precipitator these are very big precipitators <clears throat> and mostly all are continuous precipitators where there is dropping of down of temperature we add seed in the crystallization whenever we add any seed it basically provides nuclei for the precipitation to occur so here the time required for precipitation in a continuous operation is around 50 to 55 hours so it takes a lot of time for the precipitation to take place after the precipitation is over the precipitated slurry is then filtered washed and the washed hydrate is then set for calcination where it is heated to around 1100 degrees temperature and the spent liquor whatever is there goes for the evaporation for concentrating it further whatever caustic soda which is lost in the process due to formation of soda soda light structure we are adding a makeup caustic making it back to the same dilution liquor and it is sent back so it is basically a cyclic process <clears throat> so what are the reactions taking place in the bare process we are having bauxite which are having alumina bearing minerals one of the easiest uh, alumina bearing minerals easy to dissolve is gibbsite that is alumina trihydrate it dissolves easily with in sodium hydroxide and normally uh, the temperature required temperature and caustic they are two factors either you can severe on temperature or you can be severe on caustic concentration so like nalco company is going for a temperature of 107 degrees that is called as atmospheric pressure dilution at a caustic concentration of around 220 gpl similarly many people like vedanta are operating at a uh, caustic concentration of around 175 180 at a temperature of around 145 degrees those bauxites which are containing bohemite requires relatively higher temperature so in that circumstances even if the uh, caustic concentration is around 165 170 they have to go to a temperature of around 240 degrees to dissolve the bohemite because bohemite requires a higher temperature then as i told you desilication is an important step what usually happens that whenever you are treating the bauxite with sodium hydroxide there is silica bearing minerals one in the form of quartz quartz usually doesn't re react underway but uh, 
the kaolinite portion reacts immediately to form sodium silicate and if we don't remove this sodium silicate what then it is going to uh, foul our almost all the heat exchanger surface and will produce silica scales all over which will reduce our heat transfer so that's why the desilication step is basically a two step reaction in which the first step is very fast the second step is very slow step in which the liquor is basically getting converted to a soda like that is a solid phase and hence you require around 14 to 16 hours of residence time after that is soda like is formed and this liquor which you are obtaining is basically containing very less amount of silica the sodium aluminate after filtration is then allowed to precipitate by adding the seed and this is usually accomplished at a temperature of 70 degrees and the end temperature of the precipitator is in the range of 60 degrees to even 55 degrees to get alumina trihydrate and this alumina trihydrate is then calcined at a 1100 degrees temperature to get the calcined alumina which is the starting material for this melter <coughs> now as i told you importance of each unit operation and process it's good for chemical engineers because you must be very well aware of the size reduction so normally bauxite which is re received from the mines is stored in the bauxite it is blended and crushed by using primary crushers to around 15 to 25 mm in roll either roll crushers or hammer mills and then this crushed bauxite is then conveyed to the ball mill or rod mill where the bauxite is ground with a recycled caustic soda in a closed circuit grinding the ore size is recycled and the slurry is stored in the slurry holding tanks this is the typical uh, uh, photograph of a ball mill and uh, i think uh, you must be using the ball mill for determination of bond work index in uh, your lab so we are also conducting the determination of bond work index and since it is a wet grinding the amount of energy required is almost 70% less than what you get when you determine the bond work index in the bauxite and crushing a large amount of electrical energy is used in the primary and secondary crusher and more amount of electrical energy is used in the ball mill to reduce the size of the bauxite to around 63 microns 80% of the particle should be less than 63 microns because when we want to digest it the particle size should be less this is the uh, photograph of a uh, rod mill or ball mill which is used where liquor is added and then the entire slurry is then fed to the digesters in the desilication and digestion as i told you to reduce the silica scales you have to go for a desilication and the digestion temperature as i told you it depends on the mineralogy of the bauxite if it is a gypsitic bauxite you require a temperature of 107 to maximum 145 if it is a boimetic bauxite you have to go to a temperature of 240 and if it is a diasporic bauxite which is available in jammu and kashmir and uh, mostly china and ussr lot of uh, diasporic bauxite is there then you require a temperature of around 270 degrees the high temperature and medium temperature digestion requires flash tanks once you are heating the slurry to a high temperature automatically you get you get a stream which is at a very high temperature and high pressure so you have to recover the amount of steam add as well as cool the slurry so that is basically basically accomplished in a flashing tanks in which gradually the temperature and pressure are basically reduced so like for 240 degrees to bring it down to atmospheric uh, pressure you require around 7 to 8 flashing tanks for 145 degrees you require 2 to 3 flashing tanks and whatever flash steam which you are getting 
is having lot of enthalpy and that is basically used back in the process for heating the cold slurry so there is a heat exchange process which is taking place which is of very much importance to chemical engineers in the pre desilication as i told you pre desilication requires a very long time and uh, six 14 to 16 hours are required and you have to feed a large amount of steam to provide the necessary uh, energy for carrying out the pre desilication step as i told you digestion and freshing so bauxite slurry basically goes to the digester 1 2 and 3 required for giving the residence time of 45 minutes or 60 minutes or 1 hour whatever you decide the few tanks are basically he heated with the flash steam which you are getting up from the flash tanks as you can see from the bottom and the last few tanks where live steam is added to maintain a temperature like if you want to maintain a temperature of 240 degrees then you have to use live steam or 145 degrees you have to use live steam and then whatever steam which you are getting you are going to get a pure condensate and there is a alkaline condensate after the last flash tank it goes to the dilution tank in the dilution tank we add the first washer overflow to dilute it the reason being the alumina liquor sodium aluminate liquor is super saturated and it is presents pre present along with the mud so there is all chances that it will auto precipitate to prevent auto precipitation we are reducing down the concentration by diluting the system and that basically reduces the viscosity so that you can very well settle out the liquor so in the dilution and settling <coughs> the blow of slurry is diluted with the first washer overflow and then it is set for the red mud uh, settling of the red mud synthetic flocculant is added the underflow mud he uh, is basically used for the counter current washing and this is also an important step what uh, in the chemical engineering curriculum you are doing counter current decantation ccd so here exactly a counter current decantation system takes place here you are having the settler underflow mud which is basically washed washing the mud you are adding wash water from the other end and in an alumina refinery 6 to 7 washers are basically needed for reducing down the concentration of the settler underflow mud from 140 gpl to around 2 to 3 gpl which can be discharged off from the system so it is a complete chemical engineering solution which which is very important for uh, for you people then this is the mud thickening as you are knowing the mud basically comes from the central there is a slow rake which is basically moving out and that is basically directing the entire mud into the underflow sump where from the underflow pump you are basically pumping out for the repulping units so mud thickening basically takes place nowadays conventional settlers were very big in size but now nowadays high rate thickeners are basically used which uh, are having very high height and you can get a underflow solids of as high as 900 g per liter earlier it was maximum restricted to 350 g per liter then control filtration as i told you the settler overflow which you are getting from the uh, aluminate liquor uh, after settling is also containing some fine floating impurities in the form of iron and silica particles and you have to remove these suspended impurities because if you don't remove the suspended impurities then it will further increase the contaminants contamination in your product hydrate so normally we filter it out by passing it through the uh, pre coated tri calcium aluminate uh, as a filter rate to remove the suspended impurities i will show you 
how this looks the entire plate and frame type of system is there the eliminate liquor flows through it after a certain period of time and these kelly filters are having very high area of 250 meter square the filtration area per unit volume is around 4.5 meter square per meter cube the cycle time is 10 to 20 hours and on time is 8 to 16 and you attain a specific filtration rate of around 0.8 meters cube per meter square per hour as you must be well aware of the kazim kozini karaman equation after a certain period of time because of the formation of the cake the resistance increases well, because of the resistance of the cake so automatically the flux goes down so at that the moment of time the unit is shut off it is depressurized and the mud uh, the, uh, the filters are basically cleaned and then after cleaning again the mud is removed and then the filter is put back into the operation so these are continuous operations which are taking place in the control filtration area the cooling of the eliminate liquor as i told you the eliminate liquor which is coming out from the control filtration is at at a temperature of 95 degrees so you have to cool it down to the required pre uh, precipitation precipitator's temperature of around 70 to 75 degrees now at the same time the spent liquor which you are getting after filtration is at a temperature of around 55 or 58 degrees temperature so what we are using we are using cold spent liquor to exchange the heat from the hot eliminate liquor and for this we are using plate and frame filters so uh, these are called as uh, plate and frame filters and in this we basically get the exchange as i told you about the precipitation product and seed classification and filtration these are very important things and the, as i told you precipitation are carried out normally in a batch nowadays very few people are using in the batch reactors batch precipitators most of them are having continuous precipitation tanks and the slurry is cooled from 65 to 75 degrees and at a low temperature of 50 55 degree using either interstage coolers or atmospheric cooling and the time required is around 30 to 60 hours the precipitate slurry is removed either by using thickeners or hydrocyclones and the under underflow slurry is sent to the product hydrate filtration where it is washed with hot water and the filtered spent liquor is then sent to the evaporation so this is basically how the precipitation system take place there here you are using the eliminate liquor and adding the seed hydrate for providing the nucleation after this it goes to the interstage coolers where you reduce down the temperature send it back to the precipitator after the precipitation is over you send it to the classifier and in the classifier you basically get a product hydrate from the top the seed is recycled back and the spent liquor is sent for the evaporation so normally drum type of filters or nowadays instead of drum filters people are using disc type of filters the disc type of filters provide more area for filtration as compared to drum type of filters so nowadays in the aluminum industry mostly all the people are using disc type of filters now evaporation is a very important thing why evaporation is needed the reason being you are using bauxite which is containing some crystalline water in the form of al2o3 3h2o so when you are digesting the process is getting diluted with the crystalline water some water is may be lost in during the flashing stages but at the same time the same water is used for washing of the red mud so when the washing water is added in the washing of the red mud to bring down the concentration to around 140 or 145 in the precipitation 
you have to bring it back to the caustic concentration of around 175 or 180 GPL and hence we are adding makeup caustic. So before sending the spent liquor to the re, uh, digestion unit, you have to evaporate it. So normally evaporation is used and this is also another important unit operation in uh, your chemical engineering curriculum. So normally as you must be knowing, people in the aluminum industry use only falling film evaporators where the feed is fed from the top, the steam is added here, you get the condensate and concentrate and whatever vapors which are removed. Now, evaporation with a single stage is not going to give you a very high efficiency. So that's why normally six effect falling film evaporators are used in the alumina refinery and these gives an advantage the steam economy that is one ton of steam is going to remove around 3.5 tons of uh, water which is evaporated. So the steam economy in the uh, case of falling up, six effect falling up film uh, evaporators, you are going to get almost 3.5 times more as compared to that of a conventional uh, evaporator. Now coming to the calcination, the product hydrate after filtration is fed to either rotary kiln or nowadays earlier rotary kilns were consuming a lot of energy and hence people switched on from rotary kiln to gas suspension calciner where it is calcined at a temperature of 1050 degrees to 1100 degrees using furnace oil for removal of the bound crystalline water and free moisture. Here the calcined alumina is cooled and then stored in silos. I will show you the figures of the rotary kiln. So earlier you, there used to be a very long rotary kiln in which the fuel is fed from the, this side, from the right hand side and the hydrate is fed from the other side. Slowly it rotates and the hydrate is heated, it loses its moisture and crystalline water and whatever hydrate at high temperature, calcite alumina which is coming out is basically heated by the, it means uh, the heat exchange is taking by the air and this air is then sent as a secondary air, hot secondary air for reducing the fuel consumption. So rotary kiln require, requirement was, the amount of fuel requirement was around 120 liters per ton. So that's why people instead of, and there was a lot of heat was lost due to the external surface. That's why people went for fluidized bed calciner. So this is the fluidized bed calciner in which the secondary air passes through it, get heated, the primary air also passes through this one and after that is the whole stream, hot air basically comes into this one, the hydrate is passed from the top and whatever flue gases which are leaving the system, the flue gases which were leaving the system at a temperature of uh, 1000 degrees earlier were wasted in rotary kiln. But what is happening is this hot air gases or the flue gases which are leaving the system are used for heating the hydrate which is entering into the system and this uh, hot alumina is hot hydrate basically comes into the uh, main reactor or the fluidizing bed reactor. So after in this type of fluidized bed calciner the energy has reduced to a very large extent. The energy requirement is around 80, 80 to 85 liters per ton. So definitely there is a drastic reduction in the amount of energy required in the fluidized bed calciner. So these are the new developments which have taken place in the recent years. And uh, with this, uh, I thank you for uh, patient listening. I am ready for uh, giving uh, any answers 
on uh, this topic and uh, any questions hello mr lade if the students are having any questions they can mail it to my email id and i will be very much happy to give them a reply and uh, any most of many students are basically coming to our institute for uh, doing their uh, uh, project project work or uh, for industrial training in that circumstances we always uh, help them in giving certain work for them to visit our uh, facilities our center and uh, help them in giving them good training in case of chemical engineering studies is mr deshmukh there हेलो So I thank you most of the student who have joined and the faculty members who has been patiently listening to us. If you have any queries, you can contact Mr. Lade and uh, give your queries to me or my colleagues are uh, ready to uh, give a reply for any sort of work related to an interchange between uh, uh, LIT and. Uh, our institute because i am also an uh, lit ex student my colleague uh, <coughs> suchita rai she is also from lit she has done her btech and mtech from lit only so we are always there to help you out and hope you uh, we will have interactions in the future so thank you all for patient listening चलो फिर बाकी का
Okay, thank you all guys.